Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality. In today's video, we're going to go over how we can deal with finding multiple elements on a page using Playwright Test. For our last locator video, we used the computer database website, so I want to use that again. So if you don't know what this is, link is here and you can take it from uh, the code we have here as well, and I can put a link in the description. Let's have a look at this. On this page, we have a list of computer names, and this can be a perfect example of being able to find multiple elements of something on the page. So let's inspect this here and let's look how it's kind of structured. So we've got the kind of T body, which contains everything. If we go into the first TR and then TD, and we have an anchor href tag. So I can use these uh, tags here to define every element on the page well every name so every computer name on the page and i think there's three four five six seven eight nine ten of them ten of them displayed there could have just said here it says one to ten okay great so i'm gonna build up a locator finding all ten of these elements on the page let's jump into vs code and like the last video i want to say um await page dot locator and we want to build it up so let's have a look at what we had so we've got the computers class so we can take that actually if we want we probably don't need it but we'll add it in to show how we can mix and match kind of tags and attributes together so to find a class if you watch my previous video it's a dot like the css value and then i think it goes to t body tr td and then the anchor tag which is going to find the first computer so okay we'll say space so next we want to go down to t body and then we want to go into the table row then table data and then the anchor tag so that's how it's jumping down so if i just add a count on this at the moment we should see uh, let's put a console dot log in here okay and let's run npx playwright test on this what we should see outputted the console is 10 because i'm expecting 10 elements uh, to be found awesome so there we are we've got 10 be an output which is exactly what we've expected so we can keep that in a moment and what i want to do now then is talk through the three ways of working with multiple elements first last and nth so first and last basically do what they say on the tin. So if I was to copy this selector and say dot first dot click, click is just going to click that link for us. What I should see happen, and you might have already guessed it, is it's always going to click the first computer that's in this list. So let's try that out. Let's add a page dot pause right at the end. So wait page, page dot pause. Oh, it's already okay there we are so we got the page dot pause um you can do this using the vs code extension or other ways but i'm just using command line so what this will do is it'll pause the execution for us at this point what we should have seen is it would have clicked into the first you can see it clicked on the first computer name and it's paused the page for us and I can continue the execution. But what you can see right now is it's actually clicked into it, so fantastic. If I go back, that was the first computer that was displayed. So A, N, and then the rest of the details, three, two, and the end. So let's close this. So that's first, just click, does something with the first element. Well, what it does when it does the click, you can decide, it just grabs it for us and I've used the click action. Now, like the first, you can probably guess what last is gonna do. Instead of clicking the first element, it's gonna click the last element in the list. So let's just comment out first a moment and rerun this test. Now, what we should see is whatever the last element on the page was, or the last computer on the page was, it's gonna click that. Let's drag that over, and you can see ASCII white has been uh, clicked. So if I just go back a second, there we are. ASCII white is the last one in the list. Fantastic. So those two options are working exactly as we'd expect. How about the nth? So you know how to find first, you know how to find last, but there's no dot second or there's no dot third option. And the reason for this is because if you want to do that, you use the nth method. 
So let's comment those out and let's just go into nth. So I'm going to say await page using that. So let's take this part. And now what I can say is dot nth. And what dot nth is going to do is it says it right here. Returns locator to the nth matching element and it's zero based. So when it says zero based, if we go back to the web page, zero would be this one and then nine would be this one. So zero to nine, which is 10 elements. If I wanted to find number three in the list, I'd say nth two. If I wanted to find number two, it'd be nth one. And the first on this would be nth zero. So let's say we want to find this one. We don't want to find it by its name. We just want to find it by its position because you might be thinking, well, I could just get the text value and you're completely right. You could do that. But what if these dynamically change all the time and you want to pick a specific um, location? Then this is how you can do it. So let's go back into the test and say nth two, which means find the third one in the list. And we'll just do a click option or oh, not check a click option to make sure it clicks it for us. And what I'll actually do is I'll put the pause up here just so we can uh, continue over and see it exactly working. Okay, let's just make that a little bit smaller and put that here. So if I step over now, we've said we want to find the third in the list. So we expect in one, two, three, this apex C to be uh, highlighted. So let's just step over it. And there we are. It's going down using our locator. And then it's saying, let's find the third option in our list. And it's zero index based, of course. So two means three. Click over it. Awesome. Does the click. Everything working as expected. And that's it. That's how you can work with multiple elements and how you can choose which ones you want to do. If you want to click the first or the last, you have this nice, easy uh, method here. But if you want to do anything in between, you've got the nth method to use. Now, the drawbacks of these um, were explained in the last video. But just to recap, this does heavily rely on the structure of your DOM. So if some, something does change or if you... Uh, remove something you may start seeing your tests also break in so if you're looking for the third computer on the list but there's only two added it's going to break because the structure of the dom has changed now there's reasons where you will want to use this uh, but you always do need to think about it first in the example we just used you could think uh, maybe i just want to use the text value to click the computer However, like I said, what if the computer name is not there anymore and all you really care about is clicking the first thing it appears or the second, third or the last? That's where these methods will come in handy for dealing with multiple elements. And that's it. As always, any questions, please drop a comment below. A like and subscribe is always appreciated. And thanks for watching.